Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. Yeah, that's gonna be a no for me. <laughs> Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf and to kind of a mixed episode between New Kid in the Bag, my series where I take a full lineup or most of a lineup from a manufacturer that I haven't tried before and go and try to shoot a hot round at a course and Bag It or Bin It, where I look at a disc and review it and try to beat par. Because today we have four discs from the same lineup, all from Elevation Discs. We have these things are so funky, check, I mean look, this is the Binks, which is kind of their fairway-ish driver. I'm not actually gonna look up numbers on these guys because I just wanna kinda see how they fly. I imagine all are gonna be very flippy because of how floppy they are. We also have the Interceptor here, which is more of a mid-range-ish disc. The rim is a little bit thicker. Man, this plastic is like so rubbery, so weird. Then we have two different Koi. This one I think is in a firmer plastic, and then this one is in, whoops, <laughs> they're super floppy soft plastic. I imagine we're gonna be putting with this koi because it kind of seems, it seems doable. Whereas this one does not, <laughs> look at this thing, but lots of upshots. We're in Brandon, Florida, just east of Tampa, and we're gonna be playing Lamona Disc Golf Course, which is an 18 hole course with nine baskets. We're just gonna be playing the front nine, actually starting I think on hole five or six, because I've waited a while to shoot this video and there are a lot of people here now. <laughs> but I am like so nervous, this feels like it's like a seven-ish speed disc, maybe eight speed. I'm really nervous to see how these guys fly because as always with Bag It or Bin It style videos, which are Patreon sponsored because a patron asked me to review these discs, we're gonna have to beat par. And recently I have not been playing well in these challenges or in general. So beating par is still not gonna be easy, especially with these weirdo floppy discs because we gotta basically hit because I feel like they're just gonna hit and stick. I've heard a lot of good things about Elevation. I know some people who I've seen uh, at some tournaments who are sponsored by them and throw like koi and stuff. I, off the bat, don't think I'm gonna like these discs a lot but I've been surprised by some of these weirder, gummier discs, but having a whole bag of them, it's gonna be really interesting. I don't know how it's gonna fly. It's also Cooper's Hawk just totally killed a mouse and is flying away with it. That's kind of sick. All right, so our first hole is going to be 400 feet up and into the left there. That tree right there, you, it looks like it's just to the left of that tree, maybe about 50 feet, but it's actually like way deep of it. I did play a casual round where I sucked earlier, but we're gonna go with the Binks. Like I said, I'm not gonna look at numbers. I'm just gonna put it in on some hyzer these do pick up like sand pretty easily. So that's gonna be interesting. 172 grams here, the sand just sticks on there. So it's gonna hit and sit. Can't expect any skip from these guys. I'd be very impressed if I'm able to skip them at all. Just gonna hit a lot of hyzer. Oh my. Just ripped out of my hands. That does not count. Let's see if we can throw this thing at all. Whoa, that's pretty flippy. I started that out on some hyzer and it like flipped immediately. And I wonder if that's because of the flex. Because it like flexes as it gets out of your hand. I wonder if it like starts to stable out on whatever line that it flexes on. That was weird. I'm definitely nervous about trying to beat par, having not really thrown these discs. Well, not really, having not thrown these discs before. If that's any indication, I think we're still about 200 feet out. I'm kind of nervous about forehanding any of these. I think we're gonna go with the interceptor here. It does have a thumb track, so it's probably gonna not stay in the air very long. If you're like a tactile sensory person like I am, this feels like an eraser, honestly. It's kind of sick, but it feels very weird in my hands. That flies pretty good, and we gave ourselves a putt. I'm gonna try to forehand this Binks real fast, see if it will hold it all. Wow. This might be more useful than I thought. We are close, easy putt. Whoa, what the heck? That thing like lifted a lot out of my hands. I'm gonna re-putt that real fast because maybe it was a little nose up, but out of my hands I thought I made that putt and then it just stayed up in the air. What the heck? Yeah, that, ooh, takes a different grip I think. That's weird. All right, so we're going straight down the hill right there. You might be able to see a red flag. That is the basket. It's 300 feet. There is a forehand line or a backhand strap to gut or a skip shot. Can't play a skip shot. That was so weird how that just comes out of your hands. I might put with the interceptor because it has the thumb track on it, even though it's more of the mid, but they both kind of slipped off my thumb really fast. I think we're actually gonna go interceptor down the middle. Okay, definitely should put some more hyzer. Things a little flippy. Wow, this is a, uh, just kind of ran it into the ground. This is where I think the floppy coil will do well. Straight at it. Whoa, that thing releases right. Sit down. Oh no. I like that shot, but I think I did pull that one a little right. That one, I kind of like the best so far, based on everything I've thrown. Even though I didn't throw it great. Like the plastic itself doesn't feel as like tacky rubbery. It just feels squishy rubbery, which I like. 
step. Oh. Oh, that was so weird. I feel like I can't treat these like normal Frisbees, or normal discs, I mean. Honestly, treat them more like Frisbees. Because when I did that with the Koi, that second one, I made the putt. All right, hole number three for us is man, two over through two holes. That's <laughs> not the way you want to start. We're going straight up to the practice basket, actually. There's a basket to the left. We're going to go to the practice basket, which is what you see straight ahead of you. We're going to go with the banks. I just can't get all the sand off at all, which means I can't grip it at all. Yeah, it, the sand is literally just like staying inside of here. Like it just will not come out. Rub it off with my pants, maybe. I shade a little section, that's good. That kind of worked, but still a decent bit in there. Come on, Binksy boy. These are PDG approved, that is crazy. There we go. Oh, that's kind of, that's kind of decent. Not super far, but held straight. I, they are kind of stable, or they aren't glidey, I guess. But I think since the plastic itself isn't stable, like it's, wobbly and wobbling around. I think that reduces some of the glide there and makes it slightly more overstable seeming, but hey, maybe we can finally get an upshot and take a par. Maybe I should have made this challenge to not shoot plus nine. The forehand with the interceptor might be a good play. Just leave it straight at it. If anything, slight hyzer. So in case it flips, we're good. Whew. Sit down. Man, I definitely think it's something that you have to like the feel off the bat. Otherwise, you're not gonna wanna put in the time that you need to figure out the distance control because the speeds of these discs is a weird thing. Because with most golf discs, disc golf discs, you're like, oh, this is a six speed. And so that's how like fast it comes out of your hand, how fast like the speed is relative to how fast it gets a certain distance. And just based off of these throws that I've had so far, the speed of these seems like very variable. Like it'll start out very fast, but get slow but then it'll start to slow down super fast, which is kind of weird. I should really try and treat this more like a Frisbee. <sighs> what weird discs, man. It's not fun to bogey every hole. <laughs> if I don't turn this around, this could quite literally be the worst score ever taken on the channel. All right, our fourth hole is the official hole one, 220 feet downhill. And I think that these downhill shots are where these discs supposedly should thrive. I think I'm gonna throw the floppier koi because I kind of like the way it threw. It's in the same plastic as the bing stow and that thing, like you just cannot get the sand out of there. That is so flippy. All right, we're gonna start taking two off the tee and taking our best shot from all of it. That'll give us a better idea of these discs because I, I cannot figure these things out. That's better. Go in. Ah, oh, right over the top. All right, we're taking the interceptor. <laughs> My thoughts on that interceptor flight, which I think has been corroborated by some other flights, is that it probably flies like a two or three speed, but the, it feels more like a four or five speed because it's a little chunky in your hand, but it's got that thumb track. And I think it probably is like a negative two, one disc. Kind of a weird slot. Hey, we finally got a birdie putt because I'm cheating a little bit, which honestly makes it way more fun for me. And that makes it more fun for you because I'll edit it better. I think I can trust these guys on forehand more than I give them credit for. Fake birdie, but we're taking it. Two down. We're also gonna change the next hole because we totally can't reach it. We're gonna play it from an easier pad. My channel, my rules, baby. All right, our basket, straight up the gut here. It's 290 feet. Oof, okay. We're gonna throw the Binks as our first and the Interceptor as our second. I don't think we can really get there with either of these discs. I think the Binks probably on the uphill hole went about 250-ish, but we do have a tight gap. Get through that gap. Let's go. Okay, I don't know, that Binks honestly kind of goes. The flights are all weird, because out of the hand, that one and the Interceptor feel like they're gonna go so far, and then they kind of get there, and then they just kind of die. Not the best shot, threw it a little bit more down than I want, but both of them hit a gap of some sort, and that's a good thing. I should've given myself two putts as well. Still gonna go with that stiffer Koi. This and the Interceptor in the same plastic though, I have like texture things that I'm eating and sensory things that I'm touching things. And if you don't like this plastic, you don't like it. And it gives me chills sometimes, <sighs> but it's okay. Cause it's stiffer. I think we're just outside the circle. Oh man. I feel like they really like to be thrown in a floaty way. All right, I'm feeling better about these discs. I really like the Binks. The problem is the plastic that this comes in which is the Interceptor and this Koi, 
They don't hold the sand as much, but I can't stand to hold them. Whereas these are a little floppier and they hold onto the sand, but I much prefer to hold onto them just sense wise. Uh, but this hole looks like it's 230 feet. I'm glad we got two shots because I think a flex forehand is a good route, but I don't know about these. What's nice is there's that gap above that tree. And if we could hit that, they just drop when they hit low speed. So that should be a good line for the interceptor. So I'm gonna throw first and then the banks after depending on what the interceptor does. Oh no. It seems like they don't really want to move along the side. They, yeah, that's, I think that's what it is too, is they don't like to move laterally down the fairway. They like to get on a line and go straight down that line. And they wanna be flat while they do it. They don't like being on an angle. They just like finish when they get on angle. Right at the same spot. Alrighty, probably about 50 feet again, 45 probably. Ah. Yeah, literally just a flick of the wrist. Nothing else matters. All right, hole four. Water carry maybe 240 feet straight over there. You can see a bunch of discs just sitting on the water. Uh, I am nervous about these discs though. I think the Binks is a good play to kind of throw it at it on some hyzer because it'll be fast enough that it can kind of zoom past the basket. I don't even know if we can get there with the interceptor, but I'm definitely gonna try afterwards. Yeah, we only have three holes left and we need to get all three of them in order to get under par. Got some stability. That thing is so flippy, for what? All right, didn't have to throw that very hard. That thing kind of likes to fly. That's the shot. That's the shot. Ooh, let's go. I feel like I'm not even throwing these into the baskets, but these ones I don't feel like you have to putt super hard because as long as they hit the chains, they just kind of hit and drop straight down. All right, hole five, plus one now. We need to get this to at least get back to even. Two shots, I think Interceptor and Koi. It is 250 feet. I am low ceiling, I should probably throw the Binks because it's not really gonna skip very far. Binks and Interceptor it is. I th I'll throw the Koi as a third just to test it, but this is like my theory, and I don't know if it's right, but it feels like because they're floppy, they'll like flop around and then they'll find a point where like they're mostly spinning instead of flopping around, then they'll just go straight as an arrow on that point. And so normally, when you release them with some speed, they're gonna flop around up to a slightly Anheuser angle and just move on that line. So you have to kind of account for that with a Heiser release. So we're gonna go Interceptor first. Just like that, so got to that Anheuser and then just kind of, oh, that one kind of faded, what the heck? That was kind of perfect, but that was, okay, that just discounted everything that I believe. Okay, I'm gonna throw the Koi next, actually. We're gonna throw the super floppy Koi, because we don't, we already seen how the Binks flies. Solid, slightly longer Interceptor. I think I have to release on a lot of Heiser and still to the left. Oh my gosh, that thing is so flippy. At least they're more up than left. And the last coin, why not? Look at how much turn that gets. Oh, I threw that perfect. Absolutely parked it. I don't really feel like I threw these in a majorly different way than one another, like power-wise. And they're not like super far apart in terms of distance. So I don't imagine like if you go to a field and you try to throw all these, you're gonna have more than like a 60 or 70 foot variance between the three different molds. I could just not have figured out how to throw them 100% correctly, but as it stands, we got one last hole to get under par using my new rules. I think we'd definitely be under par if I did this the whole way, but this is a good way to figure out these discs when they're a little bit funky. All right, last hole, even par, 250 feet onto that little pedestal. The Interceptor's been working for me the most. The Binks, I'm getting the hang of a little bit, but I think the floppy plastic doesn't let it get stable as much as this definitely not floppy plastic. <laughs> okay, that one's definitely more stable. I based the other pin. I definitely gotta throw the Binks though, because I think that shot with the Binks is perfect. Yes. elevated basket, but we have like a 15 foot putt. So I have a history of making those in the past couple weeks on the channel. Hopefully not today. <laughs> I hate how nervous I am about this stupid putt. Yes, yes, under par because I'm a cheater, but I'm taking it, baby. These discs are funky. All right, these things are definitely in the funky category. I think they're all pretty understable. The Interceptor kind of surprised me towards the end there, but it's definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to get used to because 
I mean, four discs that you can completely taco and just have come back and be able to actually fly like discs that have some utility is really unique and cool. So Koi, I know why a lot of people throw this. I didn't quite get along with it a crazy way today. I got along with the other two a little bit better. Um, but that's that. If you want to check out my last Patreon sponsor video, check it out right up here. Otherwise, check out this one. Okay, that's a good outro. Subscribe, like the video. Love you guys.